China's economy has bumped. The question is whether the rest of the world feels a gentle ripple or a tidal wave. Now China is more than just a cog in the global economy, no one should underestimate its ability to affect us all. But how? At 18% of the world economy, China is the second largest importer on Earth. Neighbours such as Japan and South Korea are deeply dependent on its success. Germany is at risk as a producer of capital goods, and commodity specialists such as Australia rely on coal and iron ore exports. Pain here will hurt, but it's rarely decisive. And although China's currency has gone down 6% against the US dollar, this is no currency war. The renminbi has modestly risen against most of its main trading partners. China worries have helped drag Brent crude down to a fresh 11-year low below $33 a barrel. Pity Russia, Brazil, the Gulf states and suppliers to the oil and commodity sectors. But low commodity prices mostly redistribute income rather than damage economic prospects. Producers lose, consumers gain. The IMF still thinks the net effect of lower commodity prices is positive for the global economy. A China slowdown weakens inflationary pressure around the world. At worst, a deflationary spiral would cut incomes and make debts unpayable. That's worrying. But low inflation also gives policymakers additional leeway to keep monetary policy looser for longer. So there is a silver lining. The pernicious effect of confidence has the greatest potential to shock. If China's troubles persuade companies to ditch investment and households to tighten their belts, the global economic outlook can change radically for the worse. 2008 taught everyone that once confidence has gone, companies, banks, markets and the financial system are all vulnerable. So, gentle ripple or tidal wave? That depends most on whether the rest of us panic.